welcome welcome back to my channel and thank you guys so much for tuning in if you're new welcome if you're not new hey girl hey bro what to do 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 hey hey this is a video on a topic that I haven't touched base on so I'm excited that it was requested so someone left me a comment talking about how they were ready to go to college you know they're in high school they're about to go to college and they need to figure out how they can still have fun without um drinking or you know losing their faith so i'm going to just go ahead and be transparent i'm just going to go ahead and be open because i don't believe in coming on youtube and being this portraying this image of a perfect person that you know i haven't always been and i'm still not and i just feel like transparency and openness really attracts people at least it does for me so when I got saved I was still in high school but I was I was a lukewarm Christian and I was kind of back and forth I was kind of iffy and I wasn't necessarily serious and then um and that just triggered on and it spilled over into my freshman year of college and for one I went to school out of state for my freshman year so I was away from home I had a taste of freedom and I didn't go wild at all no I did some of the things that I did in high school, which was drink and party and stuff. So that wasn't anything new. But again, I wasn't with my family. I wasn't close to home. So I kind of had freedom, right? So my freshman year, I would drink. Um, I would party. And those are the two things that I pretty much did. And it didn't last for the whole entire time that I was there, you know, at that school. But that first semester, I was just like, hey, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Turn up, turn up. So anyway, so I did those things and I realized that that life wasn't going to get me anywhere. And now I'm here because of the amazing people God put in my life while I was at that school. And it was also allow I also gave myself the chance to just sit down and think about my life and figure out what exactly I wanted to do. Was I going to choose a life of drinking and partying or was I going to choose eternity that's a decision you can make right now you don't have to go to college first to figure out how you want to stay in your faith you can figure out right now so how do I keep my faith while in college one you have to you have to 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 immerse yourself in a Christian organization immerse yourself in a Christian organization that has sound doctrine right what do I mean by sound doctrine Cynthia well doctrine that isn't modified to the Christianity today doctrine that isn't the modern Christianity because the modern Christianity is okay with a man getting married to a man right so I need for you to find a sound doctrine Holy Spirit filled Jesus praising praise break <laughs> I'm kidding but no seriously I need for you to find a loving Christian community on campus an organization that will take you in that will love on you and that will do life with you two you need an accountability partner if you don't already have a mentor I would say pray about someone that God should lead you to and reach out to somebody at your church maybe an older person maybe a woman or a man if you're a girl you need ask God to show you a woman that should mentor you. If you're a guy, ask God to show you a guy that'll mentor you so that when you get in college and you're having thoughts of going out or studying or partying or praying, then you reach out to that mentor. Hey, what should I do in this situation? Because you aren't always going to be in a position where, you know, you're going to sometimes you're going to let your mind take over. You're going to let your flesh win. So it's important for you to have an account accountability partner that will be there to convict you, that will be there to hold you accountable and say, you shouldn't go to that party. You should study. You shouldn't go out and drink. You should pray. So those are two important things. Find yourself a Christian organization on campus. Find yourself an accountability partner or a mentor somebody who that you can physically reach out to and verbally hear a response back from three you also need to get your relationship with Christ on point you need to start praying you need to start asking God for the spirit of discernment because I'm telling you when you go to college you're away from home even if your college is down the street and you're living on campus you're still away from home you're still in an entirely different culture where you're exposed to so many different things I mean there's like it wasn't until I went to college that I started learning about like paganism and atheists and Islam and all these other and, and even Jewish people and all these other like religions out there. It wasn't until I went to college. So you're going to be exposed to so many different beliefs and so many different cultures and so many it's political. It's just a lot of things out there 
that you that you're going to be exposed to believe it or not regardless of you living on campus or commuting or you know coming from home you're going to be exposed to them so you need to have sound doctrine you need to be in the word of god like never before if you're not in your word now you should be but in college you have to be like never before you need to have a sound mind the word of god talks about how he has not given us a spirit of fear but of love and of power and of a sound mind you need a sound mind in order for you to go to college i'm telling you because if you're the type of person that's easily not convinced or easily persuaded or, or you're just naive um to the fact of just life and you're easily swayed by what people say there's no way you're going to make it and that's just the reality of it so you need to pray for a sound mind and this your prayer should be all along the lines of god i need a sound mind i'm going to be exposed to so many different religious beliefs i'm going to be so ex i'm going to be exposed to so many different um just uh political parties or anything like that even professors i mean you're going to have professors who are going to be atheists you're going to be you're going to have prof you're going to have to like submit to authorities the word of god talks about how we should submit to authorities you shouldn't compromise your faith but you should submit to authorities you shouldn't like argue with your your professor you shouldn't like you know indulge in anything like that but there are going to be people who are higher than you that you have to sit and you that you're authorized to that you have to just sit there and you have to just suck it up and that's pretty much that so when you're going to college in order for you to keep your faith you need to decide it's all about it's a mental thing you know what i mean it's all about a mental thing the word of god talks about how the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing right you need to make up your mind beforehand that you're going to choose eternity that's off bucks and even if you do choose now that you want to live in eternity and that you're choosing christ there will be situations where you start to consider maybe should i go to that party oh it's thirsty thursday let's go out and drink there will be times like that but because you have a sound mind because you've been in your word because you've been praying and interceding beforehand when those thoughts start to come up you start to remind yourself no i don't need to drink because jesus i can drink from the well of everlasting life i can drink from jesus and he will give me a water that will never that i will never have to thirst again you start to remind yourself of the things and all the work that you put in beforehand so it's important for you to start now if you really do feel like you're going to be struggling in college or battling with the idea of not knowing whether you should keep your faith or whether you should go out and party you need to start interceding now you need to start praying now and talking to god and telling god that god you don't want to let him go in college you want to stay there close to him and you really want to continue fellowship while you're away in school and also ask God, like I said, for a mentor. Ask God to, for, to bring somebody into your life that will hold you account of, accountable. Sometimes you will feel like you want to go out, even though you just left Bible study. Sometimes the devil will have a foothold over your life and he will start to tell you things like okay bible study wasn't really enough for you and then you start to feel voids you start to feel empty like okay well maybe i should go party it's not that bad it's a kickback and you start to consider all these things you need somebody that you can call on the phone you need somebody who will call you regularly i mean like every other day if the person has a chance or at least once a week and talk to you hey how's it going have you been reading your bible what are you up to have you found a christian organization on campus yet you need somebody a physical person to be able to hold you accountable or else it's so easy for you to fall back into the world i mean when i first got saved i didn't have like a physical person yet but because god gave me a sound mind and because i have a strong head on my shoulders and i'm saying this with all humility i was able to stay strong in the faith and i was able to hold myself accountable and god was able to hold me accountable because the days that i didn't read my word the Holy Spirit would convict me and I would feel bad and I would go back to my room and I would go and pray. So God was my only friend when I first got saved. So now that you are in a position where you're not really sure if you're going to compromise or you want to stay in your faith, you need a physical person in your life that will be able to hold you accountable and tell you that you need to be in your word. You need to be praying. You need to be doing all these things. Amen. So I know I just said a lot. I mean, I've just I poured out a lot of information out there, but I do really want for you, um, whoever requested this video, to please take into consideration the things I have put forth in this video. And if you're still not sure, I would honestly just say pray. Praying is your first resort. It shouldn't be your last resort. Praying is something that we should do all the time. The Bible talks about how we should pray without ceasing. Um, the Bible also talks about how Jesus is always, always, always interceding. He's always up praying on our behalf. So we have to be, you know, we have to take off, take on that characteristic, that trait as well, that because Jesus is 
constantly praying. I need to be in constant fellowship, but I need to be, you know, with a group of believers at all times. It's not to say that when you go to college, you're not going to have friends who aren't saved. No, because Jesus ate with sinners. But your intention and your motive with being friends with that person has to be different. You can't be friends with an unbeliever because, oh, like, I like her personality and, you know, we get along. No, it's this not time to get along. You need to be ministering the gospel to them any chance you get because God didn't allow y'all to be friends for you to just be, you know, hanging out and, you know, and before you know it, believe it or not, and this is just another thing I should put out there since we're on the lo along the lines of this. When you go to college, you're going to be exposed to so many different things, like I stated earlier, right? People, definitely a first one. Because you are chosen, because you are a daughter of Zion, because you are, you know, a guy that God chose to work for his kingdom, you will still have people approach you. You will have people who will approach you that will tell you things like, oh, your God is not real. Um, they will tell you things like, oh, your God is this, your God is that. Just totally bashing God, right? And then you'll have people who aren't necessarily against your religion or against your beliefs but they'll still be friends with you right so they'll be friends with you and they're not saved but they're not against your beliefs they're kind of just like in the middle they're just like i don't really care so while you and then you guys you start to see that you guys get along with you guys getting along you guys start to hang up hang out you guys start to you know just just chill you guys are friends go to the movies and stuff you start to see that they have more of an impact on you than you do on them why because they've never tasted and seen that the lord is good and that they're, they're living in sin so they're gonna rub off on you because that's something that you used to live in because that's the kingdom of darkness that you came out of they're gonna start to rub off on you and you're gonna start to miss the things that you used to do because of that person right so it's important for you to really be mindful of the type of people you associate yourself with about the word of god talks about how Bad company corrupts good character. If you have bad company and you allow them to rub off on you and you spend more time with them than necessary and the time that you spend with them isn't edifying, it doesn't radiate God's love. It's not going anywhere. They're going to corrupt your character and you're going to start slipping back into the kingdom of darkness. And God does not want that. So he really wants you to stay in fellowship with people. If you do have friends that aren't saved, if you do have people that, you know, cross paths with you and that get along with you, but they have a completely different belief with you, you're not friends with them for the sake of just being friends with them. We don't have time. Life is passing by like this. Jesus is coming soon. We don't have time to sit there and be friends with people and to be negotiating with them. And, and this is another thing. Since I'm on a topic of this, I know this video is like all the way out there, but this is another thing. Do not do not do not do not do not argue with people about your faith the bible talks about i believe it's first peter chapter 3 verse 15 that if anyone asks you about the faith you have answer respond with gentleness and respect right the bible also talks about when the disciples go out to people's houses and stuff if they do, if they do not accept you let your peace return to you shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving people are going to argue with you people are going to come up with so many different theologies and doctrines and people will be so more knowledgeable about you than you are about your own bible and about the god that you serve if they try to argue with you and they try to and you're trying to you know pour out your love on them and just to make amends with them if they try to do that with you shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving god knows that you've tried your conscience is clear you've done what you had to do it's not a time for you to be defending god and no my god is this no don't come for my god he is this he died on the cross with me did it it's not time for that we're not this is not you know what i mean like we don't have time for that we have a bigger calling than that the great commission hello go out and make disciples to all men you're not forcing it on anybody if people don't receive it let your peace return to you and keep it moving so you are going to encounter people who are going to argue with you and tell you things about the god that you serve i mean i don't get it and they're going to use all these things about all these scientific theories and stuff i mean i've even had a person try to argue with me and tell me well how do you how do you believe in a god that the Bible was man-made and things like that and the things he was using to support his argument were also man-made things I mean they were books about science and things like that so how was your argument valid right so there are going to be people who cross paths with you that are against your faith that are going to want to argue and stuff like that it's not a time for you to sit there and sink to the bottom of your seat and just listen to everything that they have to say but no what you do do is that you 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 gently and respectfully tell them about the faith that you have share your testimony with them and if it still doesn't convince them enough let your peace return to you and keep it moving so it's very important for you to 
Be in constant fellowship with believers, people who are like-minded. I always tell people that you need to be on the same page with people who are like-minded. You also want to give yourself a chance to regroup. Take some time out. Pray. If you don't know what else to do, pray. Pray, 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 pray. I'm telling you, if you don't know what else to do, pray. And just be in constant fellowship with believers. Um, I'm not saying that you should go out and only aim to hang out with believers no but if you are going to have friends who are sinners you have to understand that you have a different mission while you're with them you're not friends with them for the sake of being with them it's very important be in constant fellowship with other believers understand that you have a different calling from people you're not a regular person you're not a regular person at all you're you are different you are special in god's eyes and you are there to minister the gospel you need to have pray for a sound mind pray for a mentor Pray for all these things and you will be okay as far as practical things you can do to keep your faith and still enjoy college without indulging in partying and drinking. I mean, what I do at my school when I do have a chance is that our school, we have like a student activities page, right? And I go there and I see all the different types of events they have. So they might have like a comedy night. They might have like a free movie night. They might have, have like a game night or, you know. I'm pretty sure like schools have things that you can do that aren't necessarily dis displeasing to God. So you can go to like basketball games, football games, maybe grab a friend or two. You guys can go to the mall when you get a chance. You guys can um, maybe have sleepovers and stuff. There are other things that you can do to enjoy college while, you know, being a Christian. I mean, like this is the best life. This is the best decision that I've ever made in my life. And who would tell you that you're going to go to college? and not drink and party who was going to tell you if you tell them you don't do that i mean i tell people that all the time and they think i'm crazy because apparently that's the only reason why you should go to college but we are different like i said we are not people of this world so we are different so i really do hope that you guys enjoy this video and that for the person that requested it that it was helpful for you if you have any other questions please don't hesitate to ask me i love you guys and i will see you guys in my next video hey, I was lifting up everyone that's against me. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And that commission ain't missing cause I'm feeling offended. And my feelings in touch with my inner villain. He is in the killing. I know you feel him. I know, I know.